Is it a time for the buzzword for today? In the previous video, we discussed the forgotten message of Jesus. And we discussed that Jesus didn't just come to give us a prayer so that we can go to heaven if we say it. He didn't come just to die on the cross so that we can go to heaven. But he came to give his life for us and also to radically change our ideas, to radically change our behavior, our lifestyle, our philosophy, so that we become followers of him, that we become obedient to the things that he said and the way that he lived his life, that we slowly become more and more like him. And that is what discipleship is all about, being like Jesus. And the discipleship process is a circle we discussed, that we are being discipled through the word of God and through prayer and through the leaders that we allow to influence our lives, whether they be small group leaders or pastors or good Christian friends or Christian parents. But we also are to be disciples. We are to be helping other people discover the forgiveness of their sins through Christ, but also helping them to experience this radical change of thought and radical change of philosophy and behavior through faith in Jesus and through following in his ways. And we see this illustrated for us in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. Now, Paul is writing to Timothy here, and many scholars believe that Paul was instrumental in Timothy coming to faith in Jesus. Now, Timothy came from a Jewish mother, and his father was a Gentile, but he was raised to fear God. He was raised to understand the scriptures. His mother and his grandmother taught him very well. They discipled him in the ways of the Old Testament. And now Paul comes, and many believe that Paul led Timothy to faith in Christ. Either, either way, Paul became a disciple maker to Timothy. And this is what he tells Timothy to do. You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses Entrust the faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So what Paul said to his apprentice, the one that he was discipling, is he told Paul, uh, Timothy for himself to make disciples as well. Entrust into other people that faithful message that you heard from me. And Paul got that message from Jesus. And we need to understand that there is a cycle of discipleship that we're being discipled and that we're making disciples. And that is how the kingdom of God grows in our world. There is a lot of darkness in our world. There is a lot of evil and a lot of hate. But how are we going to combat that through making disciples? And if every one of us make disciples, then that spreads globally. And we need to be involved locally, and we need to be involved globally. And we need to be the kind of people that are trustworthy in our discipleship making. We need to be the kind of people that are spiritually minded with a Christian worldview, that we are gospel-centered, that we're building friendships with people, and that we're sharing with them the hope that we have through Jesus Christ. We're sharing with them how they can be like Jesus. And those that have already made the decision to follow Jesus, we're there for them to be a prayer support. We're there to be accountability to them. And we also need to look for these people in our lives to help us in our discipleship process. I have several different people that come to my mind when I think of who is discipling me. And I want you to ask that question to yourself. Who is discipling you? And who are you discipling? Who comes to you for spiritual advice? Who comes to you with prayer requests? 
they're the ones God's called you to disciple. How you doing with that? That is our word of the day. Make disciples.